Okay, so greetings everyone. This is Stephanie with the Women of AR and we are going to have a debriefing about the FIG 12 hour adventure race this past weekend. Our featured guest for tonight's debriefing is gonna be our first place women's team of Paula Wade and Julie Rudolph from 180 Adventures. And um, we'll get to them in just a minute. I'm gonna do a real quick overview of what the course was like uh, for folks who maybe were not there, who might be sitting in on this. So um, the important to know about this race is that when we checked in, we got some instructions that basically said, you'll get your maps after the race starts. Um, so our instructions let us know beforehand, um, basically that there were 24 controls out there. We could go get them uh, by any means and in any order. There was only one mandatory point on the entire course and it was called TA2, um, not necessarily a transition area. It was really more of a manned checkpoint. Um, but that was it. As long as you went to TA2 and made it back to the finish with your boat and your bike, you were going to be official. Um, and so that's all we knew until the race started. We knew that we had a prologue and um, our prologue was going to be a run to the top of one of the knobs in twin knobs. And um, at the top of that knob, we would get our maps, our race maps. And so that definitely um, influenced how the race evolved, certainly for my team anyway, because any strategizing that you did was on the clock. So this is what our map looked like. It was an 18 by 24 map. And I'll, I will um, zoom in just a little bit here so you can see. So this is where race, the race was um, headquartered out of Twin Knobs. Here's the start finish area down by the beach. So your bikes and your boats were staged here. The prologue was a run up to the top of this knob. You picked up your maps here. And then once you got your maps, you could see that you basically had two halves, if you will, of this course, not necessarily halves in terms of time or distance. Um, but there we go. Um, you had this northern part of the course. And these are mountain bike trails. This is a long gravel road. And there were checkpoints one through 10 up here. And so essentially this was gonna be a bike leg. This yellow told you that this was out of bounds. So you could bike across to these 10 points and that was the only, the only place you could take your bike. You weren't allowed to put your bikes in boats and you couldn't take them on the road outside of this area. So that meant you were getting that section by bike and then you had sort of this southern part of the course, and this was checkpoints 11 through 24 plus the TA2. And so you had start finish here, you had TA2 over here, which was your mandatory point, and then you had these points 11 through 24 that you could paddle or trek to. So that gives you kind of an overview of what the course looked like. And now I'm going to turn to Paula and Julie. And the first question I've got for you is, so what did your strategizing look like after you got your maps? Yeah, um, so the first thing we did is look at the map to see was there something that we could get right close to where we were when we got the map. And there wasn't anything, right? You just showed there was kind of that Northeast section and then off across the lake. And so our strategy was like, want a bike first? Sure. All right. So we, we didn't do, I think we felt like the paddle nav was going to be the bigger part and that the, the bike felt like it was going to be shorter. Let's go do that. And then we can kind of do whatever we can in the rest of that section. And it was quicker to get back from the different nav points and paddle points to the finish versus that bike leg. If, if we do that last, we could be way out there as time is ticking down and it's a long way to come back. So I guess that was really our only strategy for choosing what we did first. Yeah, I think it just had to do with um, not wanting to be caught out on the bike course if time was running out because it would have taken longer to get back. And there were some points where on the paddle and the nav where 
you know, if we were coming up against time, we could be getting checkpoints up until the minute we had to go back to paddle or paddle back to um, start finish. And when we were, after we got down from the hill, from the knob hill, and we hit the pavement going back to start finish, and we were just kind of walking along, shuffling along, that's when we also looked at the map and we were strategizing and talking as we were walking on the road back to the start finish. Um, so we just kind of confirmed that, yeah, we're going to bike first and um, yeah, that's all. Okay. One other, one other thing that went into that was not, not wanting to be cold and wet right at the start. So that kind of steered me towards wanting to bike first, I think, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Sarah and I ended up paddling and trekking first, as I mentioned, um, actually, I guess before we started recording, we did the paddle trek first and did the bike last. And yeah, we also spent about two minutes after we got our maps, we sat down on the side of the hill right underneath where we picked them up. We sat down on the side of the hill to look and make sure there wasn't anything nearby <laughs> like you did, which was smart. Um, and it was literally just, okay, there's a big bike leg, there's a big paddle trek leg. What do you want to do first? And we're like, oh, well, I don't know. And Sarah's first thought was, well, I'd rather paddle in the dark than bike in the dark. If we're going to be getting to single track, I don't really want to bike single track in the dark, which was a great thought. It ended up being irrelevant, right? Because by the time you got over to the single track, the sun was up. But at the time we were like, oh yeah, that makes good sense. And I think that I personally, biking is my weakest discipline. And so like anything I can do to delay biking <laughs> is like a good thing. Plus I have a really hard time staying warm on the bike. I can actually stay warmer paddling than I can biking because when you're paddling, you're exerting yourself all the time. Whereas with biking, you have all the little downhill coasts and I just have a really hard time keeping my feet and my hands warm enough. And so my thought was, oh, and then we'll be biking later when it's warmer, that'll be a good thing. So our decision was really more environmental and not really based on what we were looking at on the map, which was a big mistake. <laughs> because if you look at the map and if we had sat down and spent time to actually assess the map the way we would have if we had gotten the map before the clock started, right? I'm a person who does the maps by the numbers. Like what I always preach is do the numbers. How many bike points are there? How many of the other points are there? How long is it gonna take you to get the bike? How long is it gonna take you to get the paddle track, right? So if we had gotten these maps before the race started and sat down and done that, it would have been very obvious that you needed to bike first, right? Cause there were 10 bike points. There were 14 paddle track points. We knew we were going to get the bike points faster. We figured about four hours for the bike points um, just because we kind of knew people who had been training on this loop up here and how long they had been spending to cover that whole loop. So we knew that that would be about a four hour bike loop, which meant you're going to spend eight hours almost paddling and trekking for 14 points versus 10, right? So it totally, by the math, the the right choice was to go clear the bike first and then just get as much of the other stuff as you could. But, you know, after Sarah hauled me to the top of Twin Knobs as fast as she could possibly pull me and I sat down for two minutes and my brain was like about to explode and I felt like I was going to puke up the oatmeal I just had for breakfast. I was like, put off biking? Sure, that sounds great. Let's go paddle first. <laughs> and that ended up being our downfall. Um, so yeah, that's interesting that I, I would like to hear some of the other teams who um, did the race, what their rationale was. Um, but let's move on. So you all went and did the bike first, and I've got your bike map here that you sent. So let me share that, and you can talk folks through that. Okay, you got it? Yeah, um, so I, I don't think for us there was a choice in terms of whether we went clockwise or counterclockwise, because as you mentioned, it's gravel road kind of going up um, and then single track coming back down. So that felt like there wasn't much choice there. So we did them in order. Um, number one, 
we've got, I don't know if you can see it, but just south of number one, we've got a little red line poking off. That was a miss on our part. So, you know, the, the beginning of the race, I, I always want to make sure I hit that first one on and we missed. So we were headed up. We weren't quite sure if our odometers were dialed in. We we're kind of looking at terrain and there is a little bit of a hill there. Another factor was there was there were a couple teams coming back towards us. So I start doubting myself, right? And that's always a downfall seeing other teams early on in the race doing something different than what I expect to see. Um, so we hopped off the bikes there and went in. It was pretty clear, like this is not quite the right spot. It wasn't even a big bend. It was sort of a tiny little bend. Julie's like, yeah. yeah. We Lots stopped little- at that exact same hill. <laughs> <laughs> I had told Sarah, I had estimated about 4K from here to number one. And when we got there, we had a quarter mile left to go. And I was like, wow, we shouldn't have a, we should, ha- if it, if we're not there yet, then we're going to go well past a quarter mile. So we're not quite there yet. I don't want to go past this hill and find out that was it. Just run up there real fast and make sure yeah. that's not it. Mm-hmm. So, for what it's worth. That makes me feel a little better. Yeah. We didn't do the run up there real fast. It was more fighting and stumbling through brambles, but um, yeah, it wasn't there. And then we found the next one pretty easily. I mean, it was very clear once you were there, you're <laughs> in the right yeah. spot. I um, and then from there up to, is it pronounced Lakaji point? L- Lakiji? Lakiji. I, I knew I would mangle it. I apologize for the locals. <laughs> um, so that was cool. We rode, you know, kind of the base of where it got steep and it's, there's a big outcropping, kind of a rock scramble up a little bit. Um, there are a lot of teams up in there. So it was sort of follow the leader a little bit. There were teams coming back from the west side. We stayed more east and went up. Um, no problems finding it. it. It was kind of funny because I was so focused on the map. We get up there and there was a an engraving in the rock and then you need to know what color the M was right. I'm all focused on that. I'm like, okay, well, let's get going. And then I'm like, oh, you should probably look around, right? Beautiful view. You know, like Steph said, the colors couldn't have been better over the weekend. And then it was light out by then. And the fog was just kind of sitting down in the low spot. So you had this nice white, it was beautiful, really gorgeous. I was at that point, like, why don't we carry a camera with us, right? Like, uh, yeah, amazing view up there. Yeah. Do you want to? Roll. I'm probably talking too long about some of this stuff. No, no, you're doing great. So next one um, was another top of a rock. I think the clue is a hilltop. Um, we chose to approach from the west side, which is not a wise choice. It was a scramble up. Stuff. how did you guys go into that one? Did you come from the east? Yeah, I went up the trail. I knew to do that, though. I actually had a rappel up there one time when I set a course here. So I, I knew exactly how to get to the top of that. A little insider knowledge there. And, and it's clear when you look at the map. I mean, the trail does go right at it from the east side. We rode our bikes on the single track kind of to the base of where that was, not knowing what it was, right? It's a pretty good clip. So we had a bit of a scramble and, and some puzzle solving to get up to the top of that. But Another cool spot, tons of teams up there too. We ran into a lot of people. Was, yeah, was I imagine that was the other thing I considered after we saw so many teams take off on their bikes. I was like, well, I'm kind of glad we're not doing that because it's going to be so crowded on the single track. But I, there was enough, certainly this is all, um, you know, a wide gravel road that I imagine teams were reasonably well spread out by the time you hit the single track over here. Is that true? Yeah, that's totally true. I mean, we saw a lot of people at three and by the time we hit the true, you know, kind of single track after or at four, right in that area, it was pretty spread out. I don't, we didn't, it was fun riding. It was great. Yeah. Um, Hit four without any problem. Um, Five, we had to be a little bit careful. I think there were some teams that had gotten off, like there's a bit of a bend to the east, like north of where you are that can throw folks off up just a hair higher. It's kind of a turn. Yep. Right in there. There were teams getting off and heading in. I'm like, we are not far enough. I'm not going to make that mistake again until later. Um, so anyway, we kept going and we got that one just fine. Same thing on six, you know, just paying attention at that point. I feel like we had the distance kind of dialed mm-hmm. in and we were paying attention to that. So that started clicking well for us. Um, seven, a nice hike up. Um, that was steep. I was sucking wind pretty bad on that one. 
Um, we hit eight and I think we kind of bushwhacked our bikes through there. We didn't ride the, you know, the two kind of fingers that stick out to the, to the east and the west. We just kind of cut through the trails real close together there. Um, nine was that pond hit that and then kind of came back out the same way, actually, maybe cut over on that trail, I think. And then this big, huge, I don't know, we would call it Asker around here, just riding up on that ridge, super fun. Um, coming off of that turn, uh, hitting the trail off of, um, so there's the Sheltoe Trace and then the Lakeview Trail. Right there, you can see a little red mark. That was where we went in too early. Again, it's sort of a parallel feature in a way, but we are way short. I mean, we're only halfway there, but I think just not paying attention to the distance, again, getting maybe a little overconfident and moving too fast. Um, so we went into the woods, didn't find it, then hit it, and then nice, great downhill all the way back. That was fun, super fun. It's hard to read your map and bike at the same time. I yeah, that's nice just too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just, for sure. Especially yeah. if you're trying to go fast. Right. And I think we were back around 1130, 1145 off of the bike. And then it was onto the paddle. So I don't yeah. know. What so do you know what time you took off on the bike? The prologue was pretty substantial. I think I think we were maybe 45 minutes on the prologue. Do you remember? I don't. I think we were probably one of the later teams to get out. Yeah. We, we weren't that fast going up that hill. No, we were pretty pokey. Yeah, same here. I mean, it was a long, it was a heck of a hike up there and it was a long prologue. So that was the other thing is you had to really sort of, if you were doing the math, I mean, the prologue basically took out your first hour of the race, mm -hmm. you know, so you had to really account for that if you were being meticulous with your, your time planning. Um, okay, so you all probably were then, you said you got back when, 1145? I think 11.45, I think we were on the water. We did a little bit of planning then because we really hadn't looked at the other side, you know, the nav and the paddle at all. So we were maybe in transition 15, yeah. 10, 15. And we were taking our sweet time. Like we have some work to do on our transitions. Well, I, I have a lot of work to do on the transition. So we had a very long transition. It was nothing to be proud of. But, um, but yeah, we did take a look at the map before we got in the boat. Uh, again and talk about our approach so yeah okay so you all were just about four hours on the bike right yeah um, yeah wasn't it three and a half seven forty-five ish because i think we were back 11 30 yeah i thought we were back at a little under four hours 345 yeah i don't remember sorry yeah. i don't remember it was before noon <laughs> I thought we were in the boat at noon. <laughs> well, maybe 345, which is about what I figured. Here's the sad thing, and this goes to show what a bad decision it was not to bike first. Um, Sarah and I took off. We had exactly three hours to go bike. And so we knew we weren't going to be able to clear the bike. And as we took off, it's so sad because, you know, part of my aversion to doing it is because I think of myself as not a good biker. And so it's that, you know, sort of self-talk. We took off out of there and we biked so strong. Of course, Sarah's towing me the whole time, but you know, she was able to tow me up that entire hill and we were moving, we were flying on the bike, but because we didn't have that extra, you know, 45 minutes to an hour we needed, we ended up getting one through five on the bike. And then you really couldn't complete that loop. No, one through four, we got one through four on the bike. And then we had to turn around and go back because you weren't going to be able to complete the whole loop, you know? And so we ended up going back and basically spent the last 45 minutes of our race retracing our steps down that gravel road to get back and didn't get a single point. So, you know, it was basically for want of 45 minutes that we had to drop six points, right? So that's six points over 45 minutes that we needed off of that paddle track which just shows what a bad decision it was not to bike first. So that was super disappointing, but here's the upside, the ride back into the sunset off of that hilltop down that gravel road where, you know, you have wide road and could ride fast and hard was glorious. So we had that. 
let's think look at your all. If, if you had ridden the single track during the sunset, you wouldn't have seen that it's too, too enclosed in there, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I'm giving us that anyway. We've got, we've got the sunset. So let's look at your all's paddle track. Yeah, so here, I mean, TA2, as you mentioned, was mandatory. So we're going to do that right out of the gate, get that done. So then we can really spend the rest of our time focused on getting as much as we could on the paddle nav. So did TA2, came back in. Um, we probably didn't take the best route to 18. I had us out a little bit far. I think kind of looking at things, I thought where 17 was, was actually 18 and 18 kind of cut back in a little bit in that inlet. So I didn't have the best nav on that. So we were out a little bit further. In fact, I'm not sure, it might've been Drake White. He gave us a little jab. He's, we were kind of tag teaming with them throughout on the bike. And he's like, oh, scenic route, huh? And I'm like, not on purpose, but yeah, it was definitely the scenic route. So <laughs> we could have done that a little bit better. Did we, when did we decide our route. Did we pinpoint that when we were still in the parking lot? I feel like we might have changed something as I was looking. So I had the map in front of me and I was, I was kind of still thinking about an approach as we were paddling out to TA2. Um, I think originally we were thinking that we were going to leave the boat near 14. Um, but while we were paddling in, we're like, no, let's get 18 and let's leave the boat at 17 and then do the track. And that's what we ended up doing. But I think when we were in the parking lot at TA1, we were thinking about moving the boat and leaving it closer to 14 and kind of doing maybe the opposite direction that we did. Does that yeah. ring a bell? Yeah, but we, all the way on the drive to Kentucky, uh, we, once we saw kind of the terrain, how it was pretty steep compared to where we live, we, our number one strategy was to minimize the amount of elevation gain and loss. So we had kind of already talked about how when we got the maps, we were going to look at look for routes that that we didn't have to go up and down a lot. So um, the route that we ended up choosing um, kind of did that. We we got up first off of seventeen. Off of seventeen. So we we paid for we paid it we paid it for where we paid for it first. So we went up that really steep reentrant to get up high onto the road. And then the, the next few points were all relatively high. So we weren't constantly going up and down. Um, and you can see like for our route from 23 to 22, instead of cutting down and doing a straight across and, and experiencing all that elevation gain and loss. And by then we were already, <laughs> we were already kind of hurting. We're not exactly very fit right now. So, um, so that ended up being a really good decision because we could just jog steady, jog our jog. It's kind of like a shuffle, but, um, so that was the whole premise and the whole strategy around the overall route choice that we, that we made. And we had been talking about that for quite some time. Um, you know, ever since we <laughs> kind of got close to to cave run and I was like, oh boy. <laughs> and then using trails as much as we could too, you know, we figured, okay, even if there's some elevation changes here, like going 21 up to 19, at least there's a trail there and we're not trying to scramble straight up nothing. Um, so being being able to use that trail was, was helpful. Even, you know, the trail between 24 and 21, that was nice. We could kind of shuffle along on that. Um, and then 19 to 16, same thing, you know, we're able to use the road, use the trail. We did decide to just go straight down from 16 to 15, um, super steep. And I, I think Julie was sliding on her butt for a while. I got a kick out of that, but I got, I, I felt like we were both kind of like, uh, I don't know if this was a very good route choice. And I was Kind of kicking myself a little bit. I'm like, maybe we should have just taken the trail because we probably could have jogged that and come around. And as we're coming down, I didn't know if we were going to be, I didn't go, do a good job of aiming off to one side of 15. So I had no idea if we were going to be east or west of there. And which way were we going to go when we got down there? I'm like, well, maybe we just should just get back to the trail, kind of where the 15 is printed and then head back. As we come down, I look up and 15 is right there. So oh. it, was, it was beautiful. It was so lucky. And, you know, I think there's a huge part of this sport that is just 
walk, right? And and that was one of them where I wasn't holding us on a bearing. We were just going down and it happened to be there. So nice. Lot of, lot of nice. Water. Well, Sarah and I did this loop in the opposite direction. And so we went up from 15 to 16. Oh. <laughs> that hill that you're talking about and we contemplated <laughs> going around and doing this and I said you know it's just so much longer doing that and it's the same elevation gain it's just more gradual what if we just grit our teeth and get to the top <laughs> and I'm pretty even though we were literally on all fours like this because it was quicker than trying to stand upright and go up I do think it was quicker because it was just so much longer going around and I'm not that fast even, you know, when it's a gradual uphill, I'm still going to be slow. So I'm like, let's just get it over with. And it really was not as awful as, uh, you know, as I thought it was going to be. It was bad, but it wasn't as bad as going around, I think. So there was so that. So you didn't try to come up one of those re-entrants on the either side of it. You just went right up the we went right up basically what you went down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, where'd you leave your boat then stuff? Yeah. So now that's another that's good point that you made where you all left your boat was smart. I left it where it sounds like you all were originally contemplating like right about here. Maybe my thought was go to the end of this cove, drop it and then go 14, 15, 16, we had planned to do basically what you all did, but in reverse order. And so my thought was just about where we leave it to head off for 14. Um, we ended up stopping a little short just because that cove got so shallow and there was a nice place to drop it like right around here. And then of course, later when I looked at it, I'm like, well, that's stupid. We paddled this distance back this cove and then had to run right past it. Right. I mean, that didn't make any sense. We already ran that. Why didn't we leave our boat here? Right. We basically gave ourselves this extra distance to paddle for no reason. Where you all left your boat was much smarter because you were going to run that regardless. Right. But again, that's not having that time to sit down, or at least we didn't take the time. Right. We all had the time. It's just yeah. that you were doing it on the clock. So we didn't take the time to sit down and plan. And that's one of the things, and it wasn't a huge deal. We had a nice fast boat and we were paddling pretty quickly, but yeah, in hindsight, you certainly wanted to leave your boat out here. There was no reason to paddle this cove if you were doing this because you were going to run right past your boat here. Um, but yeah, we ended up, once we got up to, uh, by the time we got to Tater Knob, it was very clear we weren't going to clear the course. And so we dropped 21 and 24. So we went out to 22 the way you did along these ridge tops, back out 23 the way you did, 20. And then we came out, came out this and dropped down this nose to 17. And that was ridiculously steep. That's where I fell and got my huge contusion on my hip. Um, 17. And then we paddled to 18, paddled to the TA, and then um, on our way back. So now we're just coming back to go bike. We pulled out here and we're able to portage this. So we saved ourselves a little bit of paddling around. Um, again, we had a super light boat, so it was easy to just pull out. And then we just ran our boat over to the beach and then took off on our bike. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that what you all did, so then you all left there and your strategy then was to go do 13, 12, 11, if you could. I think that was so smart. I mean, the way you all did it, sort of when I looked at it in hindsight with more time is exactly how I would have done it if I had sat down and planned better because you left the three outliers over here. So, you know, if you had time, so you cleared your bike, which were the 10 fastest points that you got all day. Then you first got your TA, which you had to do because it was mandatory. And then you're paddling 18, that makes sense. You dropped your boat in the perfect spot. You had a nice loop there. And then really your three most time consuming points in terms of a cluster of points were these three. So now tell us about your decision point here. We can see that you didn't go get 11 and that's the only one you left on the course, right? Yeah, you, you go ahead. So uh, we were pretty tanked 
and uh, on the paddle over to 13, um, we were like horses ready to go back to the barn. And we started talking about how, oh, what a hassle. We don't want to paddle in the dark and my legs hurt and blah, blah, blah. So just all that so we started planting the seed that already we weren't gonna, we were gonna leave 11. So um, we kind of started that kind of talk on the paddle over to 13. And I hadn't looked at the map in a long time. So I honestly had, didn't have a very good sense for how far out 11 was or was not in this case. <laughs> um, so we, we got out at uh, 13 there. Um, we did have that bobble, you can see um, just uh, east of there, I drew an arrow into that other inlet, if you go a little, yeah, there. Um, we were actually out of the boat there, so some poor nav, I, I don't know, oh, there are boats there. So again, I get sucked by what somebody else is doing, right? So some other teams that dropped their boats there and were probably, you know, navving from there saw that like, oh, this must be it. And again, it was one of those situations where the inlet kind of cut in and I couldn't, I didn't see that, wasn't paying attention to distance and time. So we blew a couple of minutes there by hiking in there, but yeah. anyway, go ahead. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so at 13, we dropped the boat and on the way over again to 13, I was like, well, should we paddle to 12 or should we run to 12 instead of paddling to 12? So. Should we get back, get out at 13, get back in the boat, paddle to 12 um, versus if we can just, you know, shuffle along the shoreline, would that be faster than trying to paddle to it? So we opted for shuffling um, to 12 instead of getting back in the boat. Um, and uh, yeah, that didn't have really any problems getting there. We just kind of took the dumb way there because the the way to the CP went up a really steep nose. It wasn't really steep, but we were so hurting that any incline felt super steep. Um, so that slowed us down a little bit. And then on the return back to the boat, we, uh, we took a little bit smarter way. It was, the elevation was more forgiving so we could move a little faster. Um, so as you know, we finished, we had quite a bit of time left at that point. Um, and, but I don't think we had time to then paddle all the way to 11 and, and, and get their paddle to the trail and then get 11. It was kind of, in retrospect, I'll tell you what we should have done. I think, I think we should have paddled. We should have got 13, got back in the boat, paddled to 12, left the boat and um, went to get yeah. 11. I think we probably could have done it, but at, I don't know. Actually, you know what? I don't think we could have done it. We were so tired. Like my legs were, were, were hurting. So I just, we would have been cutting it too close and I don't want to lose any points after working so hard all day. So. Yeah. And I think as we were shuffling from 13 to 12, I said, you know what, if there's a team that goes and gets 11 and they beat us because they got 11, I'm like, I'm good with that. So kudos to the teams that cleared it. Um, that's, that's amazing. And I think, you know, had we not had a couple of bobbles and maybe taken our time at transition, I think we figured we maybe had 30 minutes that we could have caught shaved off, but not much more than that. I think with that, we could have gotten to 11. Um, yeah. And I agree. I think paddling up to 12, getting 12, and then maybe paddling a little further up to use the trail to get to 11 would have been the way to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those bobbles added up, you know, they were, it's annoying sure. when it happens and then just they probably added up to a half an hour and we probably would have been able to clear it if we hadn't like fumbled the ball a few times. So how much time did you have left at the end? 45 minutes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so here's my next question. Um, when you set off, did you think that you would be able to clear the course? Did you give that a lot of thought? I guess I didn't think so. I was prepared to leave some out there. I mean, I think, you know, looking at previous year's results, looking at your team stuff and the number of times you all have come in first and like how many CPs you, you all were, you know, winning the division, not necessarily clearing. There weren't very many who were tending to clear. 
And then I think the race directors had indicated like, hey, we create really big courses. So I think we had kind of set the expectation that, you know, we may need to leave some stuff out there. And that kind of played into how we planned that last nav section was like, okay, where those three, those might be ones that we end up skipping. Yeah. I, when I first saw the map, I was like, Ooh, this is not that bad. You That's know, what we said, <laughs> hmm, I think we could, in my mind, I didn't say this out loud, but in my mind, I'm like, God, I, I think we could clear this, but I didn't want to, I don't know. I, I mean, everybody was like, Oh, it's too, the course is really long. So, you know, I learned a lot from this race, just in terms of mindset and like, you know, always staying in race mode for one and not like, you know, think just start dropping points mentally before we even have facts to support whether or not we can drop the point or whether or not we can get it. Um, but um, also just, yeah, being careful with how I think about what we can and can do and what we're capable of, so. Yeah, I mean, I will tell you that with 45 minutes, you all definitely could have gotten 11. <laughs> ah. like, with time to spare. Now, depending on how you were feeling, right? But that assumes that you didn't make a nav error. So now here's part of the reason that Sarah and I um, didn't have as much time as we might have needed. We could have had that extra 45 minutes on the bike. So we parked our boats right here. We went to 12 on our way to 11. So this is our third control of the race, right? That I'm going after. And in my mind, I'm okay. So we're taking this trail around. And when the trail crosses the creek, we're going to head up the creek and we're going to go past one saddle. We're looking for our second saddle. So I'm just going to, after we see this re-entrant, I'm going to angle up and hit the second saddle, right? So in my mind, I had seen this cove and this creek, and I'm just going till the trail crosses the creek, right? Yeah, well, do you see which creek the trail crosses first? Oh, oh stop. No. <laughs> Ouch. Like my brain just completely ignored, let me get my little annotation thing here. My brain completely ignored this creek right here. Like my brain just saw one cove, one creek, go down that creek and up. I totally just didn't like my brain, just put the two together. I didn't even notice this whole other creek. And so when I, we're running the trail, we get to the creek, we go left, we start cutting up the um, slope here and I'm looking for the saddles and I'm like, where are the saddles? I'm not seeing any saddles. And let me tell you, this thing was steep. <laughs> And we just keep going up and up. And I'm like, maybe we just need to be higher. Maybe we're seeing a false summit and we're not able to see the saddles because we're below this bench. So we just keep going up and up. And eventually we're on top of this thing. And I'm like, I'm still not seeing any saddles. Don't have any idea where the saddles are. <laughs> we end up going back and forth on this thing until I finally figure out what happened and I realize I, I notice finally this split and realize where we are and I'm like there's no way we're going down and back up so we run out around oh it was awful it was so awful but uh we leave 11 and we take the trail down and like right here we cut that off this was gradual, easy, open, fast, beautiful. We hit this trail. I point out to Sarah where I screwed up. We keep running around. I mean, we probably got from 11 back to our boats in, I don't know, 12 minutes or something. Like it was beautiful and easy and fast. Like this slope was so much easier. It was ridiculous. It was kind of ridiculous. I, I felt really horrible because it cost us a good 40 minutes probably that nav error so it was it was a sad sad thing but you know part of the issue for us was that we looked at the map at the start and we said this doesn't look that big and we said it out loud to each other I'm like <laughs> I feel like we should be able to clear this course and Sarah's like well yeah I'm kind of thinking that too and so that was part of the reason as well that we didn't sit down and take the time to really do the math and we didn't wheel any distances out or anything because we both just kind of looked at it and said, eh, 
you ought to be able to clear that. And, you know, it obviously was clearable. You all could have cleared it, right? So, you know, if not for my nav error, we would have left two, I think. We would have cleared the bike and we would have left these two on the south end. And if we had done that, that would have been a really great outcome for us, right? So, you know, I, I think it was a clearable course. And, you know, our problem was my nav error at the beginning that cost us so much. And then just my general lack of fitness getting up these hills that caused us to be so much slower over here than really we should have been. Um, and it sounds like your all's the only reason you didn't clear it is because you were, were letting the race director tell you you couldn't when in fact you could. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of interesting that we were, were approaching it from different directions. You obviously had a much better outcome than we do. So we ended up leaving eight, right? Because we left the six on the bike and the two down here. And when we had to turn around on the bike, I just told Sarah, I said, Sarah, we're going to be really low in the standings. Just get yourself mentally prepared because everyone else cleared this bike, you know, so just, just be prepared. That's really going to hurt because we're dropping six over here. And she was like, okay. <laughs> and fortunately, Sarah is very forgiving and, uh, you know, she, she still loves me. So I'm a, I'm a lucky racer. Um, so, so what do you think in terms of um, advice, lessons learned? It sounds like one of them is going to be sort of the, the mental game for, for both of us. Um, anything else that you can think of that you'd pass along? Um, I would say, you know, the, the strategy of minimizing elevation gain and loss, and that, that was that played in well for us in this. Um, and also like little things that in our routes, as we were going from checkpoint to checkpoint, like if there was a hilltop between us and where we wanted to go, if we could scoot around the hill instead of going up and over, um, stuff like that, that saves energy and saves time. Um, that, oh, and also I just, want to say that don't bring a bunch of crap in the boat if you don't need it. So somebody had basically brought luggage in the boat that we didn't need. I don't know what you had in that bag, but it was super heavy. So yeah, so it, on the paddle, I was worried about my feet getting cold. And I, I just, you know, and it was midday, like it was pretty warm, but I just kind of had in my head that I was going to be cold and I wanted to be careful about that. So I am like embarrassed to share what I all had in this huge dry bag that I lugged down. I had like extra shoes. I grabbed all my food. So, you know, I, I we didn't know what the legs were going to be. So I had just a lot of food laying around by, you know, the transition. So I just grabbed it all. I threw it in the bag. So I'm like, I don't have to carry it. It's just going to be in the boat. Well, you still right. have to put that forward, right? <laughs> Look at Julie's eyes. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm yeah. just, I, we're probably not going to race together again. I don't know. But, and then that made the boat really heavy, getting it back up to the finish. And we have a pretty decent boat. It's pretty light. That thing has never weighed that damn much ever. Yeah. It was horrible just to carry it to the finish. So yeah, it was dumb. That's yeah. hilarious. And I think looking at the map, like we just, Oh, looking at the map and also checking in as we're going from checkpoint to checkpoint, if we're actually heading in the right direction. So if, you know, Paula shoots a bearing in the direction we want to go, I make note of it. I put it in my compass. And, um, you know, if we, if we start veering from that, so I'll check my compass and make sure that we're, we're still sort of on that within a, a, you know, a safe range of that bearing. And if we start veering off, I'll say it's like, hey, I think, I think we're getting a little off here. Um, and then also keeping in touch with the map as we're going along and recognizing, matching up what we're seeing feature by feature with what's on the map. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, and I'm like, you know, do you see that open area? Do you see that re-entrant on the right, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I'll yeah. start talking. No, that it's really good. Um, and I think, you know, Julie really does a good job of paying attention. Like as I'm talking about what we should be seeing or she'll ask if I'm not sharing what we should be seeing, checking in on that so that we have two sets of eyes looking, looking for stuff. Um, and pace, pace counting was a huge thing. So I was gonna ask how you all keep track of your distance. You pace yeah. count. 
we're pretty careful about it. I mean, we didn't do a great job on the bike, but I felt like we did a pretty good, you know, the odometers, but I felt like pace counting, we did a pretty good job of for the most part. So, you know, we're going 500 meters and we're both counting. So that way when one of us forgets and, and all of a sudden, you know, you've lost count, at least one of us has it. So that's worked really well. So I feel like that's the algorithm for us that works is, mm -hmm. is to make sure we're, we're measuring that distance and we know how far we need to go. So someone asked, do you know what um, your distances were on the different disciplines? I think the bike was like 23 or 24 miles. Yeah, I think so. That sounds about right. Um, I don't know the others. I didn't measure it out. Stuff did you do mm -hmm. all? No, no I, I didn't. My guess is there's someone on here. I'll bet Dell or somebody had their um, watches and or, or whatever things going and can give us a better idea of what the distances were. Yeah, I was always just kind of estimating based on, you know, the grid lines, like, okay, it's about a K, it's about a K, it's about a K. So I was always adding right. up these small things, but I never looked at it for the distance. Myra, yeah. do you know? Anybody else? Uh, as, as far as, as far as like the paddle goes that, you know, we just did the paddle point. So we just went point to point to point to point on the paddle. We didn't do any of the tracking points just because we started on the paddle too, but, um, it was almost 10 miles, just, just what we paddled. So did you paddle this same route they did, or did you paddle over to 12 as well? We paddled to every point. We didn't walk any of the shoreline. Um, so okay. we paddled to every point and then paddled back. And so it was almost 10 miles just on, um, on the paddle itself on my watch when I looked at it. Wow, it doesn't seem like that's 10 miles, but I guess yeah. it's interesting. It, you know, I mean, it's, it's far because, you know, we, we paddled and, you know, we had three people on a boat and it took us, we got in the boat, I guess, right at, um, right at, might have been right at nine by the time we looked like we were the you know, abominable snowmen and didn't want to get wet and dish gloves <laughs> and rain pants and plastic bags and everything else, but um uh, yeah, and so we came off the paddle. It was right at eleven thirty when we came off the paddle. So we were two and a half hours, and we didn't we didn't um, well we dilly dallied around. We weren't we weren't racing for time. <laughs> you know, we were just there for participation points. Um, you know, it was just the fact that we were there that was that was the big thing. But mm -hmm. um, we 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 didn't miss on any of the the paddle points. We went right to each one of them. So. Um, yeah. Okay. Interesting. So 10 miles of paddling. Wow. I wouldn't have thought that it was that much, but yeah. Okay. Cause the prologue was, um, just right at two and a little bit, um, like two and a half, I think by the time we got down to the bottom. And one of the things that, that we were smart and that I, I threw those portage wheels in with us. And, um, that was a super saver when the boat was heavy with all the wet stuff coming back up the hill and uh, Casey and Karen appreciated that. And I hauled the bag of gear, but um, yeah, Ro we rode oh, nice. the sidewalk all the way back up. And it was, that was, that was beneficial. Saved a lot of yeah, time. It, it was surprising how long that hill was, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when your boat's full of stuff, it's um, yeah, surprisingly far. Okay, cool. Good deal. And I, yeah, I don't know what the, um, what that truck is, but it's obviously more than, well, I don't know. I say obviously more than 10 miles. It seems like it's longer than the paddle was. But yeah, I didn't wheel anything out. So I don't know. And I, I don't wear anything fancy. I've just got my uh, little whatever Timex Iron Woman watch. <laughs> it doesn't do fancy stuff. Okay, well, so does anybody else have any questions for? Julie and Paula about their route or their decision making. So it sounds like, did you all mark anything at all on your map before you set off? Well, you did. You said you did some planning before you went out on the paddle trek. Did you mark your maps up at all? No, I mean, we really just kind of talked about it. I don't, I don't have a mark on the map actually, or look, or actually you were showing what we marked up after the fact, but no, we didn't, we didn't mark it at all. And now I'm embarrassed. I'm like, why don't I have any fancy marks on here? But it, you know, we kind of just did it step by step in terms of the, the nav and it felt relatively straightforward. I was able to just kind of measure as we went. 
Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. The one thing I did um, when we got back off the prologue, I just highlighted all of the numbers for the points because I was afraid I would overlook one. I, you know, that's a, a boneheaded mistake that I've made before. And I just wanted to be sure I didn't do that. And that was quick to mark them. And then once we had decided, you know, roughly what our paddle route was going to be, I literally just marked the yellow paddle route. <laughs> that was all I wanted. I don't even know why, just because it was super quick and easy to do. And so, yeah, that that's all I marked as well. Um, but yeah, like you said, it was once you sort of had it in your head what you were going to do, it was pretty, it was easy enough to keep that straight. So that wasn't super critical. But um, yeah, I, you know, none of the usual. Go ahead. I think if we had had the maps ahead of time, you know, and we had, we, did, we didn't know that that was going to be the format. So, you know, we're there at 530 ready to like get our maps and do all this planning. And then we're like, well, I guess we'll sit in the car for a while. I think then we would have mapped things out a little bit more, but we didn't in this case because there just wasn't the time and it turned out okay for us. But I think, you know, it's not like we never mark up maps. I think we just didn't have the time to do it necessarily. Yeah. You know, what was amazing to me is, yeah, I brought all this stuff set up so we'd be warm while we're planning and all of that. And then we get there and we find out we've got an hour and a half with no maps. And I'm like, what are we going to do for an hour and a half? And yet somehow, well, number one, I still went ahead and set up my whole thing because I thought, okay, once we get the maps, we'll come back here and we'll sit down and we'll plan and we'll do all that. So I still set up my little warming tent and all that. Huge waste of time. And then... We still, we're like at the last minute, we didn't realize everyone had taken their boats down to the water. Our boats were up high. And Eric says to Sarah, you know, everybody else took their boats down by the water. We're like, no. So we go running to get our boats down to the water and we're running back up the hill when the gun goes off. And I'm like, I'm tanked already and I haven't even gotten back to the starting line yet. But uh, it was amazing how quickly that hour and a half went by considering that we didn't have maps. And I felt like I was pretty ready, like everything was packed and kind of ready before I got there. I'm like, what did I do for an hour and a half? It was it was ridiculous. So can do other people who are on the call? Can we hear like I'm curious what other people did too? like, yeah, of, you know, route choice and what you did first and your thought process. Does anyone else want to share? Del Hamblin was on the team that came in second, the Chick Points team that left four on the course. Del, why don't you give us an idea what you all did? Okay, um, my video, I don't know how to turn it on. I haven't Zoomed for over a year um, <laughs> since we're back in school. So we, Christy and I left four behind. We biked first. Um, hmm. You asked me to start it, but I don't know that I, it, I don't you know did. how to start it. I did. did. I? Oh. You did. You're oh, on. Excellent. Oh, oh God, my hair. Okay. never mind. Um, so we biked first and Christy was, cause I was originally going to do this solo um, just so I can practice navigating. And so I still did the navigating and we had one big goof about two and a half mile goof on the bike where we completely both of us missed the left-hand gravel road coming off of the um whatever the lockage or however you say it point oh um, yeah I, I, in my yeah. defense i was uh just trying to keep up with christy and in her defense she didn't have the map um so we went all the way, we stayed on the, the gravel that then turned into blacktop and got far enough out. We're like, oh crap, this isn't right. So um, at that point, then we got back into the, like the mid pack of the bikers that had left first. And um, that was the only like major goof. It probably didn't cost us more than 15 minutes. It wouldn't have, I don't know. I don't think it would have made us have enough time to pick up an additional point. Um, so the rest of the biking was pretty straightforward. We went and got all those points. Um, I was, as you guys had mentioned, you can't bike, uh, read the map and eat or drink. So I was getting into a calorie deficit coming down the single track for the very last point. And um, just right, because Christy is such a beast on the bike and I am mm, mediocre at biking. Um, 
So I got into a bit of a calorie deficit there and uh, had to, you know, we sat down for maybe a minute so I could like throw some jelly beans in my mouth and get some sugar. Um, and then we hit back to the TA and our canoe route was similar, although, so we went to TA2, got that one. Um, I would much rather paddle than bike. So we biked as much as we could, or I'm sorry, we paddled as much as we could. Um, we didn't have a fancy boat. All we had was the ones that we rented. So we went to TA2 and then picked up, I don't have the race map in front of me. So the first one that was um, the same one that 180 did was that 17, I think it was 18. 18. Okay. Yeah. So we did 18 and then worked our way um, counter or clockwise around to the coves, but we left our boat where, um, where you left your boat, Stephanie, we saw you guys, but we went to the other side of the cove. So we put in there. Oh, that's parked right. Our boat. Yeah. So we put in there, but we didn't run that trail back. So we went out um, and went up to 16 up towards like Zilpo Road. I'm looking at my Gaia trace, which doesn't have the check marks on it. Um, Can you see went up the there. screen I'm sharing here? Oh, oh yeah, now I can. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so we went up from the cove, we went up and got 16, hit the road, went up to Tater Knob, got 19, went out and picked up 23. Well, we didn't do that, yeah. So at this point, we were like, okay, um, how much time do we have? We should have picked up probably 22 and at least 22. But um, again, not great at the maps yet working on it. I didn't notice that nice ridge line out. That would be pretty simple. And um, I talked to Steve because he's like, oh, yeah, it was a perfect, just easy run it out and grab it. So we got 23 and 20. And then backtracked to 16, went down like 180 did, um, a little more to the left than, so we came down into the, sort of where the re-entrance for 15 come together, um, and then hiked up the creek to 15, got 14, yeah, and then right back to our boat. And then we paddled to 13 and got that one. That was pretty straightforward. And then paddled to 12. So that little cove in between, um, that one so for most of the paddle nav i was like oh we're there and then christy like she's like we're not there yet remember the lake level is a lot lower uh, i was like okay yeah so every she's like everything you think is big you need to think bigger i'm like okay okay think bigger so we passed uh, i saw that little cove i'm like mm, is that really the little cove so we went past it and I, there was another team in front of us um and they they went past it too so we got into the mindset of, hey, there's, you know, there's no boats there, must be the next one. And we ended up on the other side and yeah, looked around. We, when this, when we were the last team in, I'm pretty sure. So we had three minutes when we hit the table um, up at the, the check-in. So at this point, we, we were on a hard timeline. We're like, if we don't find it in X minutes, we have to bail. And it wasn't up there. And I'm like, it has to be back where I originally thought. So we go there and then run up and grab it and then it was just a hard paddle back <laughs> so 12 is the one you were getting yeah 12 that, yeah 12 so we we originally were thinking oh maybe we can go for 11 but after missing 12 and then at that point we're like there's no way we can probably get out to 11 we know we can pick up 12 because we have to paddle right back it right back that direction anyway um so it worked out it was uh overall other than that little paddle goof and the bigger bite goof um not awful for my navigation so but thank goodness for Christy she's she was very patient <laughs> that's awesome so you all ended up leaving 21 22 24 and 11 yep. and 11 so we left four behind so yeah wow well I, good uh, for you good for you yeah. navigating you know some some tough terrain and the paddle is not straightforward especially with the lake level down the way it was um, and let me yeah. point something out for people who may be joining us who might be confused about this, because we ran into a, a fellow who is obviously not a very experienced racer who was racing solo. And he, it was clear that he thought that this area around the lake with these little blue hash marks, mm. that that should be water. And so, you know, we explained to him, no, that just means that that's area that's subject to flooding basically. So that's all, you know, going to be dry unless 
you've had a whole lot of heavy rain. And right now, the water level, the, the lake was at winter pool, which meant the lake level itself was way low. So this was super dry. And in fact, the lake itself mm -hmm. was many feet below what this outline shows. And so that's something to always pay attention to when you're paddling on a lake. It's good to find out what the lake level is before you go into the race. So you know where exactly those perimeter, you know, where the boundary of the lake's going to be. So that's not at all straightforward. And kudos to you for going out and tackling that on your own. That's terrific. And you all, congratulations, a second place finish against a lot of yeah. competitive teams. That's. It was fun. Yeah. Cool. Good deal. So who else is on here? Amanda Boley raced with team Burke Bar. Amanda, do you want to talk a little bit about your all's um, yeah, I can. Uh, I didn't look at the map a single time, so you'll have to bring it up and I'll try to just kind of remember. Um, we did the bike first. I think it took us about four hours, maybe a little bit longer. Um, we did take the time after the prologue. We took like 20 minutes when we got back to, so that Annie, mostly Annie and Laura could kind of make a plan for what we would do when we got to the other side of the lake. Um, we knew that we are weakest in the boat. So we tried to limit the paddle as much as possible where, so we, after we completed the bike section, we paddled basically to like a center point between TA2 and, um, yeah, like that little beach area right there, uh, which we just decided we were just going to run a ton and that's what we did. So we parked at the beach, we ran down and got TA2 and then um, stayed on that road into that little lollipop area and then hopped on the trail to go get 18. And then we ran to 17. And I think we maybe bobbled a little bit um, in that one little cove right before 17, thinking that was where we're supposed to be. Um, and then from there, I'm pretty sure we ran out of that Creek bed to 19. And then uh, south to that trail. And at that point, we made the decision not to get 21. In hindsight, we probably had enough time for it, but we didn't. But anyways, we followed up and then we hit 24, 22. I can't remember how we got to 23, 20, and then ran back to the boat. So we only got like the south side of, the, I think we left six or seven points. Yeah, I think, so you all left, what, 21 yep. and 11 through 16? Yep. And so we had hoped to get all of the ones on the south side plus 17 and 18. So just leave the ones, so 11, 12, 13, the top six. But we made the call not to get 21. Um, and we had, I think we finished with about 30 minutes to spare. So, you know, we probably could have, but just you know the way that it ended and happened to get your boat up there i think we were a little worried for time plus we ran a ton i think our total run for all of that was like 23 miles yeah so i you know probably we should have paddled more but like i mean all four of us were this is my first time racing with them um but like all four of us were for sure like we're terrible on the boat. We're strong on the feet. Like, let's just run. And now did you all have three in a canoe and one in a kayak or how were yes. you? Yes. And we towed the kayak. Yeah. Okay. How was your tow set up? Uh, Laura found these bungees that just had carabiners on the end. So we just bungeed them together and, um, they said they couldn't feel me and I didn't feel like I was being towed. So I think we, I think just the little section we paddled, it took us about 20 minutes to get from the start to the beach and then from the beach back. So maybe a little under 20 minutes. So we didn't hardly spend any time in a boat, a lot of time on the feet. Yeah. And now you all did a lot of road running. Yes. We were running all over. Yeah. Cause that, I mean, you all basically ran the full length of Zilpo road from Tater Knob all the way out to the beach, right? Yep. But yeah, that's a lot of mileage on pavement. 
Yeah, I think somebody had their watch running or whatever. And I think it was about 23 miles. And I may not be perfect on exact routes, just like I didn't look at the map, but I'm pretty sure that's about the way that we took. Yeah, wow. Well, good for you all. Um, people who don't know Annie and Lauren Crass are birth barf and their sort of first sport is ultra marathons. So it's not surprising that they're, um, that they would lean towards running as much as possible. <laughs> I was all for it too. You and Laura are, are both in great shape and great running shape. So that worked out well. Yeah. The mountain biking section was awesome. The single track was a lot of fun. Probably the most fun I've had adventure racing as far as mountain biking goes. Like normally it's just a gravel road until the end of time. And, but this was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Super. Good. Any, any other things that you took away? Because now this was your first time racing with Burp Bark and you all are planning to race together again, right? So any yeah, takeaways? Yeah, I hope so. It sounds like it. Um, yeah, like it was a little, I mean, I, haven't, I don't have a ton of experience, but I've never raced and not like had a map or at least tried to follow along to know where I'm at. So that was a little different for me at first, but like Annie's really good. So it was like after the first couple of points, it's like, ah, she knows where she's going. Like, I'll just follow along on my bike, like do to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like, I know they're, they're a fun group of girls, but they really take it serious. And I like that about them. And they, um, anytime there was any bobble, like it was, you know, within minutes where they figured out what we needed to do and where we needed to go. And, uh, yeah, I was just happy to have the opportunity to race with them. We had a lot of fun. Very cool. All right. So any other questions? We'll start to wrap this up. It looks like it's about 10 minutes after nine, but uh, I wanna be sure anybody who's got questions or comments, whatever has a chance to uh, put it out there.